Welcome back to another episode of Loyal TV. There's more than meets the eye at 609 Chautauqua Avenue in Norman. This small, unassuming structure was more than a house on the University of Oklahoma campus. The Jacobson House, as it's now known, was the epicenter of American Indian art in the early 20th century and the home away from home for a group of six Kiowa Nation students. Together, they would come to represent a watershed moment for indigenous art, changing what it means to be an American artist. So the Kiowa Six were formerly known as the Kiowa Five. They were a group of five artists that were brought to the Norman School of Fine Art by Oscar B. Jacobson. He was a Swedish immigrant. He was the school's first fine arts director and they were brought to his attention by Susie Peters when they were at the St. Patrick's boarding school. He became a facilitator, a supporter, and a promoter of their work. And by bringing them into the University of Oklahoma, began a whole new era of art. Monroe Satoke, Jack Hokia, Stephen Mopo, James Ochai, and Spencer Asaw. Then of course, the only woman is Lois Smokey. Together, that is the Kiowa Six. Their talent was exceptional. Their style was unique. They painted exactly what they saw, but that uniqueness of being Kiowa, oi goo, is what makes the art. And being able to put hand to paint and canvas of what was happening in that time period was something that is what makes their art Kiowa. It was there at the little house on Chautauqua Avenue that the Kiowa Six would connect their art traditions and customs to contemporary techniques, from the tradition of figurative art painted on animal hides to ledger art narratives to the eventual Kiowa style. With his contacts and their innate talent, Oscar Jacobson successfully promoted the Kiowa Six around the country and in Europe to critical acclaim. You've got to realize these were individuals that came from a reservation lifestyle that were forced to go to school. Dr. Jacobson understood that they're not gonna fit in the traditional classroom. So he would hold classes right here. He developed that program, especially for these students. And when they couldn't continue because of financial disparities, he did other things like the um, WPA, the, the workers program, and then he, he put together the portfolios, took them overseas, promoted them. It was the first time that you had a young Indian artists being uh, showcased, being promoted for what they were doing and it being recognized as fine art. Because before, for lack of a better term, Indian arts were seen as primitive. It's not easy being an artist, especially in the 1920s. You don't know how to handle your business. You may not know how to approach a gallery. And he was able to help with that. Little did he know he was also helping preserving the Kiowa art and some of the culture that went along with that art. Once they finished their time here at OU, the first to kind of go back to um, the Kiowa reservation, if you will, was Louis Smokey. At that time, it wasn't a woman's place to, to be in the position she was in, and especially for the Kiowa people. So the other five artists went on to produce more works throughout their years and painting large murals throughout Oklahoma and uh, receiving commissions throughout their um, lifetime and very active in the arts. The Kiowa Six blazed a trail for future American Indian artists. Today, that house is known as the Jacobson House Native Arts Center, which serves as a home away from home for Native art students and continues their legacy by celebrating and preserving Native American art and culture. The Jacobson House Native Arts Center has become a new space and place for our young students and even inspiring artists and cultural keepers, if you will. And there's just been a lot that has lent itself to providing for that experience to provide a place of self, sense, and community for our young people here at OU. The lifestyle that I had, Kiowa lifestyle, that I grew up in is gone. That still happens here. I guess that pride stems from those, just from those simple brushstrokes. Because if they hadn't have done that, 
Who knows what snapshots we might have lost at that time and what I have to hold on to that's so important, just not for me, but for my people, my beautiful people. That's all for this episode of Loyal TV. Thanks for joining us for the best Oklahoma stories you've never heard.